Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig, and in this quick video I just want to go over five little things that I have found in the menus that might not have been too intuitive, but might help make your work session in Game Maker Studio a little bit easier. So, the first one is going to be actually just a purely aesthetic thing. As you can see on the side here in my resources bar, I've actually got the icons that used to be in Game Maker Studio 1.4 and showing up here. So, I kind of like that, and I'll show you how to put that in there. All you need to do is go into File preferences you go to resource tree and then down here you just do show group node icons and you can see if i uncheck it they go away check it they come back i kind of like it it looks nice it reminds me of the icons and so there you go now the second one is this recent windows down here now for the longest time i ignored recent windows because it operated in my opinion like an absolute drunk moron it made no sense in how they ordered them and it wasn't recent in any way and so i ignored it but then i went in and found a way to actually make it work like a recent window should as in if i go and open up an object so if i open up sarah you can see Sarah is now the most recent thing that I went into and the last one was right here and now I can actually use it correctly. It's much better and it actually saves time when it works the way it's supposed to. All you have to do is go into File, Preferences, General Settings right here and then you go to Recent Windows and this middle option, Move Focused Window to Top. That's all you have to do. It's unchecked by default but if you check it it'll make recent windows actually useful at least to me if you understand how to use it i'd love to hear but with that i'm actually using it now so i figured that would be useful for you to hear about third thing is you can change what text appears in the new event of pretty much everything you make right so when you make an event if i go and i add one this text right here i can set what appears by default, it adds a lot of text that like I was always deleting right away as soon as I made an event. And so I decided to change that and make it where as soon as I make an event, it's actually what I want to see there. So again, File, Preferences. This one is going to be under Object Editor, which is right here near the top. And this default content, you can take it away completely if you want by unchecking, or you can put whatever you want inside of there. So I've got just the description, which I think is always good to have, and then one line underneath it so I can start typing right away. Makes it very simple and easier for me to work with, in my opinion. So hopefully that helps you there. Uh, the next one is this tab line, these lines that you're seeing right here. Let me show you an example of something that is actually really useful to have them on. So uh, if I go to my equipment, you can see here that I've got a lot of lines here and these tab lines show you exactly where you have tabbed at. This can be very helpful if you're doing just one if statement or you're doing switch cases, stuff like that. You can see exactly where they're at and if they're lined up properly. As you know, if you have an if statement, the next line underneath is what's going to trigger and you want to have that be tabbed correctly. So, as usual, go to File, Preferences. This one is going to be under the Text Editor and it's going to be under the Code Editor and scroll all the way to the bottom. And down here there's actually a lot of options, but the main one that we want is going to be Show Tab Lines. Now, if your line numbers ever disappear, it's right here as well. I would recommend always having that, but if for some reason they vanish, now you know how to get them back. Line numbers, white space, tab lines, all of them are right there. And I'd recommend having at least line numbers, if not tab lines. White space, I think is a little over the top. It makes everything look a little too bright and like Windows 2000 editor, I don't know. I don't use the white space, but you might want it. Now, the last one that I find very useful is on custom scripts, when you write param or argument or value, whatever you want to put in there, there's a way to be able to view the description that you also set on that parameter. So like if I come over here, down here at the bottom, you can see that it says player, which is right there, and then it has the description of that. Now, the built-in functions don't have anything like that, so you can't get a description for them. But on your custom scripts, if you get into the habit of writing the description and the parameter for each thing, this can be very helpful, especially if you're working in a team. 
So the way you access that is by file, preferences, you're going to go to languages, GML, and under here you can have argument types in the status bar, and the status bar is what's down here. And you can have display argument descriptions, which is what I currently have checked. I find that to be pretty useful. If you want argument types as well, if you want to go like full throttle commenting, you can do that. And inside the parameter, you can have it be like uh, instance ID. And if you save that, um, if I go to a place where I am equipping, let's see, equipping item, you can see here now that instance ID is also there along with everything else. So that's really useful and hopefully a couple of things you didn't know. If you have any other tips, I encourage you to leave them down below. Let's make this just a great place to come and find little tips and tricks for Game Maker Studio. That's what I've got for you today, though. Thanks for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later.